The Alpine Bobsled at the Great Escape is one of the most difficult roller coasters in the world to experience. This relocated Intamin Bobsled is a cool coaster, but it's rare to see it operational. This coaster can close for a myriad of reasons, ranging from mechanical to weather, and it really is a shame because it's easily the park's best steel coaster. So is it worth all the hassle to ride it? Find out in this review of the Alpine Bobsled. Bobsled coasters are most notable for their track design. Unlike most roller coasters that hug the track on all sides, bobsled coasters feature vehicles that freewheel through semicircular shaped troughs. This mimics the experience Olympic athletes get while bobsledding. The earliest bobsled coasters were constructed in the late 1920s and 1930s. Built by John Norman Bartlett, these early bobsleds were constructed of wood, but by the mid-1970s, all of these models had ceased operation. The only wooden bobsled coaster remaining to this day is Flying Turns of Knobles, which opened late in 2013 after a lengthy eight-year building process. Intamin reintroduced bobsled coasters in 1984 with their Swiss Bob model. Built with steel, the Intamin models would feature single cars that could either seat riders inline or side by side. Intamin would only build five of these coasters, three in 1984 and another two in 1985. Sarajevo Bobsled was one of the ones that opened in 1984. Starting at Six Flags Grey Adventure, this coaster would stand 64 feet or 20 meters tall and feature 1,490 feet or 450 meters of track. Sarajevo Bobsled was a popular coaster and it often saw long lines but the coaster was part of the Six Flags Ride Rotation Program and removed after 1988. Six Flags Great Adventure would receive the record-breaking Great American Scream Machine, an arrow looping coaster in its place, and that's now where Green Lantern sits to this day. Meanwhile, the Sarajevo bobsled was relocated to Six Flags Great America for the 1989 season, where it would reopen as Rolling Thunder. Now during this relocation, the ride received an important upgrade. While at Great Adventure, Sarajevo bobsled sat guests in line, similar to a log flume. Each car could hold a maximum of six riders. There were three lap bars, so guests were seated in pairs. Because of this awkward riding position, odd-numbered parties often were not paired up, which ate into the already low capacity. When Rolling Thunder opened, the vehicles received two upgrades. One, riders would now be seated side by side with individual lap bars. Two, the vehicles could now seat eight riders as opposed to six. Rolling Thunder still had low capacity, but it was still a 33% increase and the ride would now cycle full trains more frequently. The ride was also popular at Six Flags Great America, but it would be dismantled after the 1995 season as the Gurney Illinois Park finally planned to open the long-delayed Southwest Territory expansion, and a bobsled coaster did not fit in with this western-themed area. Rolling Thunder sat in Great America's parking lot for the 1996 and 1997 seasons until being sent to a new Six Flags park for the 1998 season. The Great Escape in Queensbury, New York was sold to Premier Parks in 1996. And then in 1998, Premier Parks purchased Six Flags. While the Great Escape was never rebranded as a Six Flags park, it did immediately receive a hand-me-down coaster. Rolling Thunder was relocated to Great Escape for the 1998 season, where it would operate as Alpine Bobsled. The coaster would receive pink paint on the trough, although that has really started to fade and peel in recent years. The park is starting to repaint sections of the trough and sections, prioritizing the ones that run alongside the midway. And when the ride was relocated to Great Escape, it also received a really cool looking entry archway and a Swiss Lodge themed station. The ride features six cars, each themed to a different country. However, you will never see all six cars on the track at once. Two are rehabbed on a yearly basis. Then the ride usually only operates with three cars on the track. While the ride can run with four cars, it's a rare sight, and it doesn't really help the ride's capacity anyway, because the park will only have one bobsled on the main course at a time. Over the past few years, the back row has been blocked off. No official reason from the park has been given, but I've heard two rumors. 
One, it was whiplash related as the back row often fishtails and slams into the brake runs. Two, it was maintenance related to reduce the momentum of the cars into the brakes to reduce wear and tear. Whatever the cause may be, the impact for guests is that the bobsled can only seat six riders per car once again. Since Great Escape was a smaller Six Flags park than Great Adventure or Great America, the lower capacity was thought to be less of an issue. However, Alpine bobsled will almost always have the worst line at Great Escape on any day. Since the coaster dispatches roughly one car every two minutes, you're looking at an hourly capacity of roughly 180 riders. That is downright awful for any attraction, let alone a ride that is considered a major coaster at the park it's located at. Expect this ride to have an hour wait most days. Because of this putrid capacity, Great Escape does not include the Alpine bobsled on their paid go fast pass skip the line system. Interestingly, Alpine bobsled is included on the membership skip the line passes though. Guests using this pass enter through the exit and ride every third bobsled. And this is a strict policy, almost to a fault. I used these passes in 2021, but I ran into a weird issue one day. The staff members were only loading membership skip the line pass users in the American bobsled. After a guest riding in that car reported that their lap bar raised mid-ride, the crew working the bobsled continued to cycle the ride, just not filling the American bobsled. The crew apologized and told us that they could not seat us in any other bobsled, citing park policy. But thankfully the delay only took 5 to 10 minutes because maintenance quickly came. It's almost as if maintenance was hanging around this problematic ride. And there are many reasons why the Alpine bobsled cannot operate. First, noise. The echo of the cars running down the trough can be heard throughout the park, so Grey Escape closes the ride's queue line at 6 p.m. As long as you're in the queue line by that point, you can ride, assuming it doesn't break down. The coaster also tends to open an hour late. I'm not sure if that's noise related, staffing, or something else related to maintenance. If you see this ride testing early in the day, I strongly recommend camping by the main entrance to maximize your chances of A, riding it, and B, doing so without a massive weight. Second, weather. Because of the freewheeling nature of the vehicles, Alpine bobsled cannot operate in the rain or if the trough is wet. After a rainstorm rolls through, it can sometimes take a few days for the trough to fully drain. If the Alpine bobsled is a priority for you, it is best to plan a visit after several consecutive days without precipitation. Third, loose articles. Items in the trough are a hazard. Glasses are only allowed with an athletic strap, and the park will stop the ride if they catch anyone with any articles in their hands during the ride. The ride is also surrounded by trees, and if too many leaves or branches fall after a windstorm, this can also take the ride down for a few days. Four, even without these issues, the ride is temperamental. I commonly see this ride stuck in the lift hill, and usually it's a mechanical issue. I expected Six Flags Over Texas' La Vibora to have similar issues, but that ride is operated open to close in all my visits to that park. At this point, I've become accustomed to seeing the close sign in front of Alpine Bobsled's entrance. My first time visiting Grey Escape in 2000 saw this coaster break down the lift hill for the rest of my first day at the park, but thankfully it did reopen the following day. So while I got the credit early, I have struggled to re-ride it. Grey Escape is a park I have visited every summer, minus 2020, since 2013, and it's usually a weekend trip, so I visit the park on days when staffing should not be a concern. Yeah, I've only been able to ride the Alpine bobsled in two separate visits. Attempts to ride it have been thwarted by all four issues combined with the ride's glacial throughput. And do not rely on the park app to determine if the Alpine bobsled is running. A staff member admitted to me in 2019 that they now usually list the ride's closed by default even if it's operational. That speaks to just how unreliable this ride is. I got burned by this in 2019. I didn't enter the park until after 6 p.m., and I heard the bobsled running much to my surprise, but they had already cut the line off. The ride board outside the main entrance tends to be more accurate, but you cannot check that remotely. Now I have heard the ride ran more frequently than usual in 2021, so kudos to the park maintenance staff for having this ride running more reliably than in past years. 
Assuming you can actually get on the bobsled, let's talk about the ride experience. In terms of seat selection, I have a slight preference for the front. It's cool having the unobstructed view of the trough. However, the second and third rows are a little bit smoother because they aren't on the ends of the bobsled that bang into the brake run. I much prefer the side-by-side -side seating in Alpine bobsled than the inline style seating found in a ride like Love Vibora. It is way more comfortable because you're not slamming into the side of the car. But these vehicles can be a nightmare for taller guests. There is very little leg room, so just be warned if you're over six feet tall. Once dispatched, you slowly ascend the lift hill. Once at the top, you then twist down and to the right. After this turn, the trough starts leveling off and then it dips downward slightly before the next turn. Several turns in Alpine bobsled have this profiling and it's honestly the best part of the ride. You can feel your bobsled momentarily come off the trough on all those dips and slam back down. This is more likely to happen if you have a heavier car, but it's a really neat sensation you cannot really get on any other ride. If you watch a POV, this can be observed whenever the camera has a rapid jerk and you hear a loud banging noise. Alpine bobsled then winds up into the first mid-course brake run. And brace yourself for this transition. Anytime you approach a brake run this ride, a series of guide rails sprout from the side of the trough so the vehicles properly line up with the brakes. This transition will really bang your bobsled around and the entry into the first brake run is the most violent because it seems to occur with more speed. After being slowed down a bit, Alpine Bobsled twists down its largest drop. And like the first drop, there's a slight dip as you level off, which again has your bobsled go airborne for a split second. You then navigate this upwards S-bend into another mid-course brake run, and the change of direction again can have your bobsled slightly leave the trough although you really need to have a heavier bobsled to get this one. The second mid-course brake run is followed by another twisting drop. This one is far more gradual than the prior two. You then quickly twist to the left on a 90 degree turn and wind upwards into the right into a mid-course brake run. And you again will feel the bobsled momentarily lift off the track, entering and exiting this 90 degree turn. Off the third and final mid-course brake run, Alpine bobsled slowly turns to the left and then to the right. Due to how little speed you have, the bobsled likely won't leave the trough in this transition this time. You then meekly crawl into the final brake run, ending this unique coaster. These Intamin bobsled coasters have two notable differences in how they ride compared to the Mach ones. First, the Intamin ones are way smoother. The Mach models have slatted troughs, so it almost feels like the wheels are riding over a cobblestone road at all points. Meanwhile, the Intamin ones have a smooth and continuous trough. While this results in a more comfortable ride experience on the Intamin ones, the trade-off is the ride's uptime. Mach troughs allow water to quickly drain. This just isn't possible in the Intamin ones. Second, the Mach ones are more about the swinging up the sides of the trough. While this will happen on the Intamin ones, it's far more graceful and less exaggerated. The main thrills in the Intamin ones come when you physically feel your bobsled jump the track for those split seconds. So what would I rate the Alpine bobsled? I would give this coaster a 6 out of 10. Alpine bobsled is a problematic coaster. Between its atrocious throughput and downtime, it is a royal pain to ride. However, it is a pretty fun coaster, if you can actually get on it. The coaster itself is admittedly flawed. The transitions in the brake run are not good, and the layout is repetitive and anytime you build up speed, you're going to be heading into a mid-course brake run, which kills the pacing. But this coaster is just so unique. The visual of riding in an oversized trough, while similar to a tube slide, is a neat sensation to get on a roller coaster. And this coaster has that element of feeling out of control between how you gently slide up the walls, and more importantly, have those brief moments when you feel that bobsled leave the track. Alpine bobsled is easily the best steel coaster at the Great Escape. Its moderate height and speed make it suitable for all ages, while the novel riding position makes it exciting even for seasoned coaster enthusiasts. I wish you the best trying to ride it though. I also wonder how much longer this coaster has. 
This rye has been rumored to have been on the chopping block for years. Intamin no longer manufactures this coaster model, and have already touched on this ride's low throughput and uptime issues. Add in the fact that this coaster borders Great Escape's popular water park, and honestly that water park seems more popular than the dry side most summer days, and I think this coaster will likely be gone soon. But the fact the ride ran better in 2021, and also got some fresh paint, gives me hope this unique ride may still have more life left than I think. So those are my thoughts on the Alpine bobsled, the Intamin bobsled at the Great Escape. What are your thoughts on this coaster? Have you had as many issues riding this coaster as me? Or have you been luckier? I would love to hear what you think about the Alpine bobsled down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.